My name is Akinola Davis Jr. Um, where am I from? Tough question. Um, I'm from London. Uh, my family is Nigerian. I was raised in Nigeria, a little bit in New York, uh, the English countryside, just all over really. Kind of, uh, kind of, yeah. I've lived all over, so I'm a bit of a social chameleon. What do I do? I'm a, I'm a filmmaker first. Um, but somehow I've managed to find myself um, working in around music, particularly like urban or contemporary sort of electronic music. Loads of stuff that we call tracks and stuff like that. Okay, there's there's maybe like two <clears throat> two ways you can describe grime. The one is the literal sense. So grime musically was like a derivative of house music, like two-step, which... So this is the lineage of how I believe grime came about. There was uh, American two-step, which came over here and became um, like garage. Yeah. But then we sort of sped it up and added our own spin to it. And then from that, it became UK garage. And then from UK garage, it started amalgamating to what's basically become grime. And grime is... It's basically a 140 BPM, really um, industrial sounding, or at least it kind of was, and it's very raw, and it's very energetic, and it's really emotive, and it's really, it's just communicating a form of frustration, which may, maybe can be um, articulated as anger. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side is, for my, what I define Graham, Graham is kind of like an attitude. It's more of a, you know, it's very DIY, it's very punk rock effectively. It's, it's very DIY, it's very much like, we're gonna do this and we're gonna be heard irrespective of, of who we feel needs to hear us. We're gonna make this for ourselves and we're gonna do it in the capacity we wanna do it. Uh, it's gonna be on our own terms, it's gonna be our own speed, it's gonna be our own rage, it's gonna have, adopt a particular dress code, a particular way of talking, particular slang. We're going to adopt our own heroes, our own icons. We're going to basically represent ourselves, you know. Um, and I, I say that totally as an outsider because I don't feel as though, at, at some stage, I don't feel as though Graham reflected my experience, <laughs> but I could understand how it reflected kids from London's experience mm -hmm. and maybe in the early noughties, maybe kids from Birmingham, maybe kids from Manchester, basically. It's very, it's very synonymous with like, uh, with what I'd say like a black or migrant um, identity of being British, musically. What does London mean to me? Uh, it's, uh, it's like, a, it's, it's like a really good social experiment. It's basically, I think my generation is, um, for me anyways, can't speak for anyone else, for me it's like the best it's the best and maybe last of a dying really good social experiment which which got loads of people from different parts of the world aka the colonies um, and put them in this urban landscape and you know provided infrastructure where like everyone could be taken care of like at least health wise at least welfare wise and and there wasn't like a real integration, everyone just like celebrates that they're from different places and just live together. And that's kind of what London <clears throat> is for me. It's, it's, it's the closest thing we have to, in my opinion, I haven't been to, I've traveled a fair bit, but I haven't been to places like Canada, which seem really progressive, but as yeah. far as I'm concerned, London's like the closest, and it's probably quite a privileged and limited view, but it's the closest I think we'll come to like having a form of like social utopia and that's quite that sounds quite grand but mm -hmm. it's the only place in the world where i feel like at least racially and culturally that everyone <clears throat> fits in 
and can like has a stake and doesn't maybe before needed to prove but now it's become more of a sense where we don't need to prove it which is just from London basically. You know, after like what happened in France with Charlie Hebdo and sadly what's happened in Belgium more recently, um, there was a big outpouring of emotion in regards to, you know, people, loss of life and terrorists happening and my thing was, you know, yeah, that's, that's really, it's really important that we like, we show solidarity with any loss of life because it's terrible. Um, but I found it really sad that, you know, how we choose to mourn life and grieve life is really subjective based on who the media decides is like important to sort of like be saddened about, you know. I think any loss of life, whether it's in Fiji or whether it's in Pakistan or whether it's in Afghanistan or whether it's in, in Mexico, you know, or whether it's in Alaska, like I feel as though any mass loss of life through the acts of like, you know, crazy people who are trying to push an agenda which they want to fit their narrative, um, I think is sad. And at that point in time, there was like, there's been mass, larger mass killings in Nigeria at the time. No f real form of social change has ever occurred without it stemming from being a grassroots movement. Um, so in regards to Nigerian Lives Matter, I just, you know, you know, we always bang on about stuff online or in my community of friends, and I just like, well, I'm tired of that, you know. I just wanna, I wanna just, I wanna show solidarity with that loss of life, and yeah, it just kind of came together. on the day I didn't even know he was coming but then he turned up and then he and then he was there you could physically see him and then he was like yo I'd like to talk and I was like I'm not going to say no and I guess that really helped boost the profile of what we were talking about and it helps because he's Nigerian and he and his brother and his sister they they kind of in the same lineage of a bracket of people that want to reflect where I think I exist in this world is like a pan-african effectively um, so I think, yeah, I think I've definitely bettered off, benefited off the grime scene. Um, I don't think, I'm very reluctant to say I'm like a spokesperson or a gatekeeper or anything in that notion because I don't really, I don't really subscribe to that chain of thought. I just think like, you know, I just think I'm, I'm like a witness, if anything, you know, I just witness it and the real people who make it are those making music. And I guess, yeah, the listeners are part of it. So I guess, yeah, maybe I've, I've contributed and I, and I DJ and stuff like that and play a little bit of grime when I, when I can. Um, so yeah, I think I definitely have benefited. I, I'd be, I think it'd be remiss if I, if I, if I said no that I hadn't. I think it's, I think there's a sequence of events, like I was saying, being the ecosystem, there's a se sequence of events that have like brought me to this chain of thought, this, the way I think, the way I act, the way I dress, the way I choose to conduct myself, um, <clears throat> how I talk, um, how I can talk to you like this and then, you know, like speak to someone using a l loads more slang or switch out of that and talk with like a pure Nigerian accent, like, um, social yeah, it's like a social chameleon and I feel as though, as much as I'm part of the grime scene, I think I'm part of like any other scene that like is influenced.